Are you feeling tired, worn out, and finding yourself having poor sleep? Maybe making amateur mistakes? Well, you're not alone. It's called overwhelm. And it's a phenomenon that more and more, in my opinion, too many people are beginning to experience because of all the excessive demands on our life, because of the high levels of uncertainty, because of all the stuff that just goes along with life. And we all go through it from time to time. This experience of feeling overwhelmed sucks the life right out of you, doesn't it? It causes productivity to plummet. It causes your energy levels to drop. It causes us to feel like crap. And even our relationships suffer because have you found yourself saying, having unexpected flare-ups, expressions of anger, maybe raising your voice or screaming or stuff like that, that later you feel embarrassed about? Again, you're not alone. Way too many people, in my opinion experience, are experiencing this. So in this video, I want to help you with that. In this video, we're going to take a look at two aspects. What it is, what are some of the causes, so that you better understand it, and then how to prevent it. And if you are in overwhelm, what you can do to get out of it. Hi, my name is Ken Kasha, and you may know me as the lead instructor and international train director for The Silver Method. And those of you who know, I've been doing this work nearly 50 years, and I can relate to this overwhelm because I admit I've been there myself more than a few times throughout the course of my life. In fact, just even in the recent years, being an old school guy who started back in 71, traveling the world, doing personal development programs, guiding, facilitating, you know, the Silver Method four-day training, the game has changed, as we all know. And the way we reach out to people, the way I serve you, the way we connect through social media, videos, etc., has changed dramatically. And I admit, not too long ago, I found myself like, where do I begin? It was all this new learning, unlearning patterns that were no longer serving in the present to learning these new patterns, especially in technology and marketing and so on and so forth. And I'll spare you the details. Well, happily, I feel so happy and pleased that, and, and fortunate and blessed that I have these tools to help me navigate life to be more responsive, less reactive, and to help get through it and, and release the pressure of overwhelm and not let it get the best. Because if you let it get the best of you, you can go into a funk, you can go into a depression, you certainly lose your motivation. Can you relate? Have you been there? And I, now I'd like to help you to do the same thing. Because it's a real phenomenon, it's a real challenge, and yet it can be prevented. Certainly, absolutely, you can minimize it and maybe even use it to fuel your, your, your motivations, your efforts. So, for example, it begins with two things. It's about really self-mastery. It's about taking command of your life. It's about taking charge, taking control of your life so that we're responding to life's challenges and difficulties rather than reacting, rather than those knee-jerk reactions that kind of tend to get us into trouble. So it begins with self-awareness. There are two things necessary. Self-awareness, understanding about causes, circumstances, the triggers, and then self-regulation. Having the tools, having the resources, having the skills and or the strategies that you can count on to deal with this. So for example, let's do number one. If we look at number one, I've got my handy cards. I'm going to do a high-tech presentation for you. It begins with self-awareness. Understanding what are some of, making sure, <laughs> making sure we know what are some of the causes. So for example, you may have demanding clients, a demanding family. You may have people who impose unexpected expectancy, expect too much, unexpected things, you know, outcomes, performance. You may have people who disrespect you, who talk down to you. You may feel unappreciated. You may feel that you're working way too hard and being paid even less. All these factors contribute to the feelings because our feelings are a trigger to release, causing the brain to change the chemistry. And that chemistry will affect our physiology, will affect our biology, will affect our, how we feel, how we move, how we speak, how we sound, 
and all of that affects, of course, the outcome. So keep in mind that a basic premise, a basic fundamental principle actually is your thoughts are the trigger, the release, and there are many contributing thoughts. So if you get an unexpected bill in the mail, or somebody calls you up and accuses you of something, or sends you an email or a text, even worse, do you find yourself ah! reacting? Animal like it, upset, angry, extremely defensive, or being objective about it. So it's really about managing those feelings, those emotions, so that they don't get the best of us. So it's important to understand. So with awareness, recognizing the triggers, recognizing the, the triggers that cause the pattern, because we're all creatures of habit, and we've fired and wired our brain for 10, 20, 30, maybe 50 years or more to respond to life in a certain way. So we've got to unlearn those old patterns and then fire and wire new patterns, and then through repetition. So it begins with the awareness and often just being aware of the trigger, understanding what's causing it, and not ruminating on it, not wallowing on it, not worrying about it and thinking excessively, recognizing it, that empowers us enough to be able to step back, take a look, what's going on. Now I know sometimes that seems unlikely because we're so upset or we're so angry. I, I agree. It really does though, guys, gals, it really does begin with that. This is just really good basic positive psychology and looking at the, the neuropsychology of the matter. So I'm not making this up. Once you have that awareness, then it begins, the sec second step, excuse me, would be, I just want to, in the hopes of that this will help you to remember more clearly, self-regulation. So what we mean by that is you've got to have some skills, you've got to have the right training. I, I mentioned I'm so fortunate, early in my life, I was 19 years of age, I was a struggling student at Boston University, I was failing in engineering. And I learned the skills on the silver method. I went through a four-day program. I had anger issues. I was kind of helpless and hopeless and kind of just going along, following the followers, suffering from headaches and, you know, more interested in partying than life. And I feel so blessed and fortunate. I found these tools. I began to practice. I made dynamic meditation part of my practice. I began to study and research. It was so cool. And I was, and next thing I know, I wasn't having the anger issues. The next thing I know, I wasn't getting the headaches. And when I did get them, I could eliminate them without drugs. And I graduated cum laude, studying less, and became even a full-time silver instructor in the Boston area while I was still a full-time student. My whole life and career, over nearly 50 years of span, has been much like that. And I'm, again, I know I'm blessed and fortunate I have these tools. So I'm hoping that I can pass on to you in this short video some of that awareness, some of these tools, so that you can begin to take charge, take command, and not let life get the best of you. So part of the self-regulation is, well, first step is, one of the tools would be, we're talking about overwhelm, and it's been called many things. If you look at the work of Dr. Daniel Goleman when he was at Harvard University, and he talked about the amygdala hijacking, and traditional stress management, uh-oh, been there, done that, when we look at traditional stress, man stress management, I can remember oof, uh, about 20 years ago, maybe more, everybody was doing stress management programs. Corporations, organizations at every level were investing heavily, bringing in consultants, trainers to do stress management programs. And I found that as time went by, it became a been there, done that. I don't want to even go there. And nobody even wanted to hear about it. Why? Because even after investing all that time in the training, and I'm talking really bright, intelligent, s superb people, excellent programs even, but they didn't work. And they came back after the weekend training, and Monday, nothing changed. Same old, same old. And I remember having this conversation with some of the physician groups I was doing work for, and some of the organizations that I would do some you know, three-hour, four-hour emotional intelligence workshops to help them navigate. That came up. I found that when I went to business expos here in Connecticut, it was really fascinating. There were seven, as I remember, breakout sessions. So I, I was just checking out what they were doing. Each and every one. No, I went to the first room. It was packed. Every seat taken. People were standing on the side aisle in the back. 
Second room the same, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth room the same. <laughs> I went to the seventh breakout session, happened to be the last one in the lineup, was on stress management. Two prominent people from a university here, and the room was empty. There were two people in the room, and three people up front demonstrating with equipment, research, I mean, really, really very well researched and evidence-based information. I felt so bad for them, I sat down and I went up later and introduced myself. So the point of that is, it's a reflection on, people have kind of had it up to here of being frustrated with being you know, sold on the promise of something and then it doesn't work. So why is that? Dr. Goldman talked, Daniel Goldman, excuse me, talks about the amygdala hijacking. And what the amygdala hijacking is, it's, it's part of a command center in the brain. It's a, it's a gateway, you might say, for our emotions. And when we have excessive demands, when we have excessive pressures, when we have too much on our plate, when we feel like there's not enough time in the day to do everything I do, when we have to-do lists that are out of control, when we have people who expect way too much from us, when we feel unappreciated, undervalued, unloved, I'm invisible. <laughs> you get the idea? Can you relate? That piles up. It's like a pressure cooker. And it's this, although some of these things are, are, are big, it's the small things that build up. If you were to put on, when springtime comes, your garden hose, turn on the water, right? And then crimp the hose, you know, flex it, bend it, the water stops flowing. Duh, I know. But then let go, what happens? It forcefully comes through, and there's almost like a, an explosion of water, and then it normalizes. That's what happens to some people. When they've had it up to here and they can take no more, it's like the last straw. Ah! They flare up, they scream, they yell, they raise their voice, they say things they wish they hadn't said. That's what overwhelm does. He called it the amygdala hijacking because blood flow, physically, physiologically, blood flow and oxygen, because our blood vessels get constricted with the tension and blood stops going to the brain and it blocks off the higher thinking functions which make up the frontal lobe, 40% of the brain. And the first thing to go is memory. <laughs> you know, so we joke about senior moments. I turned 68 this year and people say, oh, you're having a senior moment? No, it's a more of a stress moment. And the second thing to go when you're in the, what's called the freeze, you like that for a term. It's like a deer stuck in the headlights and they, they don't do anything. I call it the duh moment. You stare at everything on your desk, all the work, you don't know where to begin, and you just kind of flake out, duh. 20 minutes goes by and you've done nothing. That's what they call the freeze. And in that state, nothing happens. Motivation drops. We can't even think. And cognition goes. So most of the traditional stress management programs have, are founded on what? They're founded on cognitive shifts. Brilliant pieces of work, by the way. Some of the most brilliant minds. A lot smarter than me. But under those conditions of overwhelm, they don't work. Because the last thing you can do is think and strategically plan and process when you're overwhelmed, when you're in that freeze moment. So again, the term is called, you can look it up, the amygdala hijack. I hope these fancy cards help. And when that happens, cognition goes. So with due respect to traditional stress management or even cognitive behavior therapy, when we're in, in the moment, we're in, when we're in that high stress moment or that high anxiety, we cannot think. We need something that requires no thinking, that's instantaneous. So I'm going to teach you some things here now, some cool things. First thing is awareness, right? We said, so first solution is be aware of the triggers. You've got to understand what are your triggers? What are those uh, slight switches? I want to use maybe a better term. What are some of the s switches? Who are some of the people in your life? I mean, some people have told me, some of my c people who I get to mentor, some of the people in my Silver Method classes that go through four days, they say, I know what you mean, I'm feeling pretty good, I'm driving to work, I pull into the parking lot, and I see my boss's parking space because there's a plaque there with his name on it, <laughs> and I want to just strangle him. Because they have what? 
a memory of past negative experience. Uh, maybe he's abusive verbally. Maybe he's not appreciative. Whatever, it, or, or, or she, it could be a she. Whoever this person is, and it's association. So it's a neuroassociative memory. And it gets, if we're not careful, if we don't pay attention, we get conditioned. We train the brain to expect that. Can you relate? I mean, just think, is there somebody in your life just thinking that you're going to see them tomorrow or next week? And you might what? Brace yourself if you haven't released it. And then again, there are people in your life, just the thought of seeing them. For my wife and I, it's our grandchildren, we're new grandparents. Just the thought of going to visit them, traveling over to California, it's like, I mean, I'm in joy, a big smile on my face, I look at a picture. So be aware of things in your environment, people, places, situations, and make sure you surround yourself more and more with the very people and situations that have a positive influence. And those that have a negative memory attached to it, you can liberate yourself. You not, may not accept the behavior, you may not, it may be un unacceptable behavior, but at least you can have some empathy. May, some empathy. You might re recognize their humanity. If they knew better, they do better. That doesn't excuse what they did. It's really about forgiveness, isn't it? Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves also. So we're talking about triggers. Often, often, not always, often, just knowing the triggers, being aware of them, we can minimize the effects and even prevent them. So that's a big, big step. Part of also awareness then is, as we look at here, you want to also then breathe, as you're aware of them, you want to breathe through. That's right. Oh yeah, I know, been there, done that. Everybody tells us to breathe, right? Why? Slow, deep belly breathing where you're inhaling through your nose very slowly, filling your belly, holding it for about four seconds, and then exhaling out the mouth with your tongue touching the roof of your mouth is a natural antidote to distress. It causes a release of dopamine and serotonin and all the good neuropeptides. It's like having a bath. It's like bathing your, 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 your nervous system with all these good neurochemicals. And we feel good, we feel better. And it doesn't make the challenge go away, but it, it empowers us to be able to tolerate, to be able to navigate it more effectively and be more flexible. So the second thing is the breathing, help the, it's the beginning step of the retraining of your brain, recognizing the pattern, recognizing what's triggering it, and then you're retraining with the breathing and acting more responsibly, taking a step back, calming yourself, speaking more calmly, making a conscious effort, I can tell you in conflict management, to lower your voice, you know, a few decibels, speak more slowly and more softly. And that in itself, you say, well, that's not very powerful. Exactly. That helps to calm people down, especially if you're in a situation with somebody who's kind of, you know, and you don't want, because it takes two to fight. It only takes one to love. So you got to be careful not to feed those fires of anger. The next thing is, I want to teach you something called the three fingers technique. Well, not the technique. We spent four days building this out in the Silver Method Immersion Experience of Life and Intuition System. Hey, maybe one day you'll join me. I hope you do. It's a phenomenal class. I've been teaching it all over the world for nearly 50 years. And most every thought leader who's out there has been through it and has give, been so gracious to give some great accolades and, and uh, referrals, etc. So one simple process is, is when you're at home, when you're in the office, when you're on the beach, or when you're in the tub, or when you're in bed, in other words, when there's no pressure and you're nice and calm, it could be even going for your walk or your exercise. When you're in a state of bliss or you're in a state of ecstasy, or maybe not quite that dramatically feeling good, but you're at least calm and at ease and there's no pressure, it has to be done ahead of time. If you try to do this when you're in the moment, forget it. You want to do it ahead of time. And while you're in that state, so here's how you fire and wire. You want to elevate your emotions. 
you know, you're, you're imagining yourself at an ideal place of relaxation. And if you were there, what would it be like? As if you're there now, what would you hear? What would you feel? What would you smell? If you're in your ideal life, in your ideal interaction, how would you carry yourself? How would you be speaking? What's going on? As if you're there. So once you're in that state, then, and it helps to close your eyes. By closing your eyes, that naturally slows down your brain waves. I had the good fortune of working with Jose Silva. He mentored me. He's the first man that I know of who initiated the original Alpha Theta training. There are people out there, and there are phenomenal people who are doing Alpha Theta training. Dr. Jose Silva was the first back in 1944, and we went public in 66. So by closing your eyes, naturally the brain will tend to slow down by reducing the amount of input, the sensory input to the brain. So while in that state, you put your first your fingers and thumb, together like so, hey. and you just tell yourself, today when I'm talking with my client, today when I'm dealing with my challenging client or person or friend or lover or child or, you know, or, or I'm driving in heavy traffic or I'm giving a speech or I'm about to give a performance or I'm being interviewed, you get the idea, or I'm on a test or the interviewer this is all I need to do, and you actually do it, so you what? Some people call it locking it in or anchoring it. You create it. You're, you're, you're programming the operating system by closing your eyes by, in a relaxed state. You're accessing the so-called subconscious, which is the operating system of who you are, who I am, and you're creating an association to this. And then you don't need to remember any details other than to do this. So as you're going into the heavy traffic and you feel three fingers, relax, just think relax. I can do this. I'm a great driver. Or you're about to have that sensitive, delicate conversation. Catch it right in the beginning. So the awareness, the self-awareness that it's beginning to you know, be triggered, this will prevent it. This will nip it right in the bud. And the sooner you catch it, the more effective it is and it's self-reinforcing. So you're about to go into a competition, you're about to give a presentation, you're about to give a performance, same thing. Because quite frankly, you could be in front of hundreds of people every day of your life, and every time you're with a new group, if you really care, and you're concerned about doing a job and excelling, you're gonna feel that, what I call, creative unrest. That feeling never goes away. Amateurs might call it, excuse me, stage fright, it's creative unrest. Something like this helps you to empower. I know when I first started, I used to shake like a leaf and it'd be soaking wet and I'd go dry and I'd go blank and I couldn't remember anything. And luckily I have these skills. It works, guys. Another thing you can do is, is talk it out. Just checking my, 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 my um, bullet points here. Have a discussion, a dialogue with the person in a calm way. Dear friend, it could be your spouse. It could be your child. I love you. I care deeply. I value this friendship. I value this job. I value this work. I value you as a client. I value you as a student. I mean, make sure that's sincere, assuming that's the truth. And yet this kind of behavior is not helping. It makes it difficult for me to be at my best with you. It makes it difficult for me to stay calm and relaxed and enjoy your company. Or it makes it difficult for me to serve you better and be at my best. You get the idea? So if you talk about it, I can assure you in a calm, intelligent way, most of the times you'll reach an accord, you'll reach an agreement, you'll be able to make a shift. So talk about it, not repress it, because if you repress it and say, ah, screw this, who cares, can't change City Hall, you're going to make it a hundred times worse because you're repressing it. It's those repressed day in and day out small upsets that get the best of us because after a while we can't take anymore. And in fact, it throws the whole body out of balance. And you'll find that deep in the fascia, the connective tissue between your bone and your muscle, you'll have stuck stress. And then you wonder why you have aches and pains all over your body and your legs and you're stiff and you get the idea. Talk about it. Maybe you need to what? We're talking prevention here. These are ways to prevent it. So exercise regularly. Oh, everybody says, Oh, you're just going for a walk as exercise. Just parking your car a little bit farther and walking a little bit helps. Dancing, you like to dance. Do things that you like. Put on some music and dance. Or go dancing. Or go for that walk. 
or do some stretching. It's a natural antidote to release the distress. Plus, it's good for your heart. It's good for the you know for the cardio function. It's good for your health, and it's great for the brain. It helps with things like neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to bounce back. It's what gets us you know how to reinvent yourself, how to bounce back, how to maybe fall on your face. I admit, throughout my lifetime and career, I nearly went bankrupt a few times. I've fallen on my face. I'm a teacher at heart. I know very little about, I know more, but I'm really not a marketer. I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm, part of what I do is help people stay calm and focused and in flow with their intuition. I help people take command of their lives by empowering them. I don't do it, they do it. You've got the ability. I provide the tools and the training that works that they can count on with that. Another thing is yawn. Prominent neuroscientists have found with brain scans, <sighs> I did say yawn, it's not my technique, I'm just reporting it to you. Mark Robert Waldman, author of How God Changes Your Brain, reports, <sighs> it helps the brain stabilize. It helps the brain get back into balance. It helps release even at night, before you go to sleep, it helps you to just calm down. It doesn't mean you're bored. It doesn't mean there's something wrong. Another thing you could do is go for a massage. I did say a therapeutic massage. As often as you can afford. Or maybe you can do a trade with, with someone. But it's helpful. I mean, there's nothing wrong in seeking help, asking for help. But maybe you need to talk to someone. Maybe you need a professional. I don't pretend to be a therapist. I don't pretend to be a doctor. I'm, I'm just here to provide tools and skills that I've helped a couple of hundred thousand people in live trainings all over the world with this. I, you know, there's a whole track record of, of people getting results. And the next thing that I would swear by, it's my favorite, I think it's the number one most important thing today, and if you've been paying attention to all the research being released about what? Meditation, mindfulness any kind of meditation practice, whatever it might be, to do on a daily basis, whether you do it for 5 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, once a day for 2 minutes, helps. It can only help. It's a way to improve neuroplasticity. Again, your ability to bounce back, your ability to get up in the morning, your ability to stay motivated, to have more energy, to think more clearly. And if you make this a practice during the day, you will get more done in less time. You'll be more productive. You'll boost your business. You'll speak more clearly. So, for example, during, throughout the day, when you go from one task to another task, one client to another client on the phone, perhaps, one, one um, presentation to another, one topic to another that you're studying, stop about every 50 minutes to an hour, close your eyes, and a few, three slow deep breaths. And those deep breaths as you exhale, just think, relax, releasing the tensions, and then clarify your intention. What's your goal? Why are you about to do what you're going to do next? It's an excellent, and it doesn't take long. It might take you anywhere from a minute to three minutes. I know you're busy. You're busy. It'll help keep your brain stable. It'll help you be at your best. So make meditation a part of your practice. I've been meditating. And also, people who meditate regularly, all the research medically says you get into homeostasis balance and you boost your immune system and you'll stay healthy and you'll age more gracefully. And all the research shows people who regularly meditate, they don't age in the way we might think the norm. They don't look their age by the standards. In fact, chronologically, they're this old, but biologically, they're only this old. And that's a fact. So self-awareness is what we've been also talking about. And meditation practice helps to boost, to be more conscious of our awareness, our values. It helps to be also consistent in your actions and behaviors with your values. That's what is most important to you. So remember, it begins with self-awareness and then self-regulation. Having the tools, having the strategies that you can count on, whether it be exercising, a meditation practice, having a dialogue, breathing slowly and deeply, using your three fingers, building those associations in, listening to some great music. All these things help. So gals, guys, I sincerely hope you will put this into practice. It will make a tremendous difference in your life when you do. 
You don't need to believe a word I'm saying. Find out for yourself. Just do it. Work with it. And you can count on it. Because you know, you are far more than what you appear to be. And if you really want to take command of your life and stop following the followers and stop being reactive, it's really an inside game. We take charge. We need to take charge from the inside, from in here. And the easiest way to do that is having the skills and the tools. So please, can you do me a solid? If you're finding this of help and use and you're valuing this, would you please share it with others? Would you share with three people right now, three of, of your friends, family, people who you believe could get value from this? And one day, I hope to meet you in a live training. If you'd like more information, just visit my website, silvermethodct.com. That's Silver Method of Connecticut. Thanks again, and have a good one.